Hello everybody and welcome to another video. So today, we've got a pretty interesting topic based on some news that came out now. Uh, there have been a few things talked about by the devs, we'll do like a proper roundup at some point. But today I want to focus specifically on one thing that was announced in a blog post today, talking about Guild Wars 2's economy when it comes to Heart of Thorns. So of course when an expansion is added, there's so many new systems with the guilds, with the new precursor crafting, with the new legendary crafting, with the new gear sets and the new currencies on the new maps. A lot of stuff is going to change with the Guild Wars 2 economy. And so Arena Net threw out a post kind of explaining uh, some things they're trying to do to make sure things are in a healthy place. And you know, the majority of stuff in the game has worth, while stuff that is super rare, rarer than it should be, like silk, for example, and linen, hopefully those will become a little bit easier for us to get. They're, notably, I will say, the blog post never touched on silk or linen at all. They did say, for example, though, that salvaging rates were going to change, and what I can imagine about this is when you got stuff like thick leather sections coming from salvageable materials, we're probably getting less of those so that the leather market can actually be a thing again. Anyway, it's basically a blog post saying we can't predict everything, but here are a few things we're trying to do to address some of the ways the economy works and tacked onto the bottom of the post was a hugely controversial subject. That is the fact that they are taking some of the rewards from dungeons. And now, let me be clear here, they're very inspecific about how much they're taking away from dungeons. They're taking away some of the incentive of dungeons, and they are moving them to the raids and to the fractals. And of course, in an MMO, you can't nerf rewards to something without people getting pretty angry about that fact. That's why when you add something to a game, you need to be very conservative and very moderate about the rewards you put in. Because when you take the rewards away post-launch or post-release of that feature, people will absolutely cry foul. So I want to talk about this. I do want to be as unbiased as possible about this. This, to me, affects me greatly. I've completed that Dungeon Explorer track, which requires you to finish, you know, five explorable paths for each cycle. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. The primary way that I've ever had gold in Guild Wars 2 has been through Dungeon so I'm heavily invested in those rewards that they've given us and of course it sucks to hear then that they are being taken away But so I want to present some of the arguments inform everyone on the topic So we can all like post our own views on it and whether it really is a good move for the game First thing I want to say and this is something that I expressed in a tweet a while ago For many of you reading this news many of you who don't follow the game very much who don't play the very the game very much And yet you, you know you've got very fierce opinions you have to realize that dungeons have been a dead content stream for a long time. And I, when I say that, I don't mean nobody runs them. People absolutely do run them. But what I mean by that is that ArenaNet, for their side of things, on their perspective, they kind of created this thing, and now they don't want to look at it anymore. And they haven't really touched it, and they've held it at arm's length, and they basically pretend that they don't exist. This, of course, is a very sad fact, but it's not a new one. And you can make the argument, yeah, there's a big difference between uh, having content unsupported and basically not touching it versus deliberately nerfing it down. And I completely agree with that, but I think they may ha actually have good reason for doing it. Not just the economy, but for the way they're trying to move away from the Zerk meta, which is heavily ingrained into dungeons, and also the amount of value they get out of supporting raids and fractals in the future. So before we get into that though, let's do a bit of a history course. So. There was at one time, a long time ago, a team that was dedicated to the support of dungeons there at ArenaNet. They managed to fix a couple of bugs, make a few changes. Ascon Catacombs, I believe, was the dungeon that saw the most changes as a result of the efforts of this team. But it was quickly dissolved. All we've really seen in terms of changes for dungeons are sporadic, almost shotgun feeling, um, dotted updates here, there, and everywhere. You know, like they'll randomly add or tweak a boss here or there. They'll change the, uh, the way that a specific projectile or something functions. And a lot of the times it seemed like almost incidental or accidental changes that are a result of like the spaghetti code in Guild Wars 2 that has affected some boss, some skill, some enemies using in a dungeon when it was actually directed at a completely different change somewhere else in the open world. Basically, ArenaNet haven't looked at supporting dungeons for a long time. They cut their losses. They decided to try and make it a varied content stream, at least if you want to do it. They valued the fact that this was at least somewhat engaging content that would encourage people to group up and to form communities, which is very important for an MMO. And uh, they did this by changing the way that the rewards worked. A long while ago, around the time of the champion boxes being added to the game, they made it so that after every individual path you completed, you'd get a gold amount for completing that path. Uh, it was pretty much set at just a gold per path for everywhere in the game, and then some of the paths that they deemed were a little bit more difficult uh, got a bit, a bit of a buff. But the important thing about this was it was a daily reward. So you could only really do that path once, 
to get that full gold. You could then repeat it for some other minor rewards, but that forced people to do a wide variety of paths. And so instead of being in a situation where the community just found the fastest path they could possibly run, stacking up on gold find and spamming the crap out of it, this was COF path one, Instead of that, pl people to get maximum gold profit actually then were encouraged to run a huge variety of the paths of the dungeons. And so most days, you'd actually engage, if you were doing this for gold, in fairly decent content. Now, the dungeons themselves weren't very hard. They didn't push the engine to a particularly interesting place. They didn't encourage many uh, varied builds. You know, there wasn't much variety there. You'd often be experiencing very similar gameplay. Uh, read the Zerk meta. That's what we're talking about here. But you were at least focus there was some emergent gameplay there was going to be some difference in your dungeon run on friday compared to your dungeon run on monday moment to moment you were going to a whole ton of different areas across tyria you'd be in ascon for a little while you'd be outside in the sunshine at cm for a little while or you'd be deep underground in the shiver peaks and so on this is actually really important to focus on because this is a quality of dungeons that i absolutely do not believe for a while we will see the raids and fractals keep up with. This means that the rebalancing of the rewards in some ways is a negative change. We may only be incentivized to do the fractals three times a day. We can do a whole ton of dungeon paths today. We can spend a lot longer and feel rewarded in dungeons than perhaps we can in fractals. There's a lot more variation there. Fra can fractals and raids really keep up with that? Well, at first, no. I think eventually down the line, given that ArenaNet do want to support these so heavily, eventually we will be in a place where they can give us as much variation as the dungeons do. But for now, yeah, that's a pretty sad change. So ArenaNet did at least, what I'm trying to say, appreciate that there was some quality to dungeons. So even though they made the decision, it seems, at some point that they wanted to step back, they at least forced us through these daily chess rewards to experience a wide variety of the contents. And at that point, they went with their plans and they let it be. They've left us alone. That's the state that dungeons have been in. Now let's fast forward to Heart of Thorns being announced, uh, the challenging group content being announced, and specifically a couple of months ago when they released their information about updates to Fractals. You will see if you go back on my channel and to many other content creators out there, people who have been playing the game a lot, you will see at that point a lot of people showed worry, upset, even anger at the fact that Arena Network clearly moving away from dungeons completely. There seemed to be, at that point, no chance dungeons were going to be supported again. They were focusing entirely on fractals and on their raids, which they weren't fully ready to announce. So there have been exciting new changes for fractals, and we've been focused on those. There have been exciting new changes for raids, and, you know, the introduction of raids in the first place that we've been focused on. But this does mean that dungeons have been left in the dust. This isn't actually news. And so I will just say, if you're angry about this change, this gold change, shifting the way that the gold looks, because, oh, there's dropping dungeons as a feature, and ArenaNet have a horrible history of dropping content streams and you know they never stick to what they originally set out to do you're, you're pretty late about that buddy we've been talking about that a long time people have been pointing to the dropping of dungeons as a reason to not have much faith in arena nets new systems you know and that they'll support those for a long while that said you would be pretty right in my opinion to be upset about this fact i think that dungeons absolutely are salvageable i think as i just expressed to you guys there is something fun about them even though they are easy even though it would take a lot of effort to really bring them onto par with the way that the fractals for example are designed Dungeons have value to me, and I have always hoped that eventually they would go back to them. It has always upset me throughout many of these Heart of Thorns interviews where they talk about their challenging group content, and the word dungeon is like is like toxic to them. It's like they can't say it. It's like this horrible foul thing that they need to leave alone. It's uh, it's a real shame that they're just kind of plonked in there now, and they're being untouched. And, uh, you know, welcome to the club of being disappointed about that, because it sucks. All right, anyway, so let's look at why ArenaNet may have wanted to do this. I think probably the majority reason that they have for this may not even be economic based. I think it is simply that they are pushing for raids and they are pushing for fractals. They want to add lots of new fractals to the game. They want to add lots of new raids to the game. Now, if the easiest, most majority way that most of their players get uh, are getting gold comes from dungeons which they're not putting any updates in at all and dungeons have more people running them which they will should dungeons continue to offer more gold f you know for the effort than these other content streams arena net are gonna put a lot of effort into building new fractals they're gonna put a lot of effort into building new raids and players will play through it once or twice 
and then they'll go back to dungeons for the rewards. And they don't want that. They don't want to be spending money, spending time, spending marketing on content that people only spend a little time in. Because ultimately, MMO players are basically purely motivated. It would seem, and this is a sad fact, and I like to consider myself maybe outside of this a little. Uh, we seem to only care about the rewards. It doesn't matter how good or engaging the raid content is, or the scale 100 fractals are, or the new instabilities they're making, all of that stuff. It doesn't actually matter how good the gameplay is. If you, if you do that, and all you can think is, wow, you know, I just spent five hours doing this, this uh, fractal, okay, this 100 fractal, it was a nightmare, I got to the end, and I've got basically the equivalent of a single dungeon path, you're going to feel kind of terrible about yourself, and you're just going to go back to dungeons. So I think that's primarily the number one thing that they're trying to stop happen here, and I think that is actually a fair thing for them to do. And so, to be clear here, what they say in the blog post isn't that they're just removing gold from dungeons. It says that they're rebalancing the rewards to take it away from dungeons, but push it into these new areas which they do want to continue supporting a lot of. You could be angry that they're not supporting dungeons, but that gold will be moving to the fractals and to the raids. So, these will now feel more rewarding for you, and hopefully encourage people to be in these new content streams, which is smart, because I do think at their core, the fractal experience and the raid experience are more engaging and will satisfy more of the player base. So let me look at this whole, you know, Zerka meta thing. So many of us seem to be dying for the opportunity to play support builds, right? Or to play tanky builds. That could be a thing. It could even be a thing in fractals in theory, but it definitely seems like it's going to be a thing in raids. If Arena have a situation where people don't even really run the raids because the rewards don't feel very good compared to dungeons, then yes, now there's a tiny little place for you to do some support, but that's really not going to mean very much. Why? Because you spend the majority of your time doing the thing that rewards you the most, which is dungeons, and in dungeons, all that matters is the Zerk meta. I'll tell you what guys, there's already a sort of place for you to play a healer if you want. You can go to the silver wastes and you can heal the carriers as they run around. Is that enough for people? No, because it's only a small niche of the game and there is more reward opportunity elsewhere. So this is important. And now I think uh, a lot of you guys will be thinking something else. You'll be thinking, okay, right, look, I understand what you're saying, that's fine. But why do they have to nerf the dungeon rewards? Why can't they just buff the crap out of the raid rewards and the fractal rewards? And so now we actually come to the economical side of the argument. So I'm guessing that this is the arena net perspective here. To take the kind of average estimates, for me, I would say I get about 50 gold every two days. If I do a full dungeon sweep on one day and then a full dungeon sweep on the next day, and I sell on myself about 50 gold, right? So why don't they just make it so I can get 60 gold in two days from running raids and fractals, right? Why don't they just buff it up? And the whole point here is that they don't want to blow out the economy they don't want to make inflation even more of a thing and this is absolutely true because you'll specifically see that in the blog post what arena net are doing is they are nerfing liquid rewards what does that mean for those of you out of the know that means that they're not nerfing stuff like in terms of items which you'll trade on the tp to then get the money in they're nerfing those like flat gold rewards you'll find mostly then that probably means the bonus chests at the end of the dungeons all the other juicy stuff that you'll get your chances at exotic the chances you'll get rares and all that kind of stuff that's all still going to exist you might think oh they're just being stingy but you should appreciate the way that the economy of the game actually works if they do just leave it as is and buff the gold in those new content streams this can really contribute to a lot of inflation now you might think okay inflation isn't necessarily a bad thing well maybe not for you as an active player but it definitely is a bad thing when it comes to new players coming and I know it can seem difficult to care about this, but it is important that when new players come to the game, they don't have like ridiculously massive, huge, enormous prices to pay for everything because people are playing for years ahead of them and push the economy to a place that's, you know, incredibly difficult to reach. So uh, on this idea of inflation, actually, another thing you guys might be thinking is, well, what about stuff like the Silver Waste, right? Silver Waste is really unengaging gameplay and gives you just as much, if not more gold, you know, depending on how long you do it, if you pass the daily limits, than dungeons do at the moment. What, and they're happy to just leave the silver waste there? Why, why did dungeons deserve the nerf? Dungeons may not meet raid and fractal, you know, quality of content, but they're still a hundred times better than silver waste pressing F. That's true, but there are two things to consider. Number one, they want incentive in the Silver Waste for people to consistently stay in that map. If the rewards aren't there in Silver Waste, the meta event is basically completely uncompletable and there's huge amounts of content revolving around that entire map people just do not see. And second, and most importantly, the gold that is generated from the Silver Waste is not very much in liquid gold. It's through stuff that people trade on the trading post. The trading post is a massive gold sink. 
Just this week, before this blog post came out, and this may blow some of your minds, guys, uh, there was a post on Reddit about how the economy in Guild Wars 2 has changed with inflation. You had something like, okay, in the first year, there was like 300% inflation in the game. In year two, there was even more inflation in the game, like an incredible amount of inflation. But then year three, as we toggled in, it basically immediately after the Silver Waste came out, were we still feeling a ton of inflation because of the new rewards that came from the Silver Wastes? Well, actually, we weren't. Because of the way that they're balanced, not only did it counteract all of the inflation that was going into Guild Wars 2, but actually we are now in a process of a little bit of deflation now. So the Silver Waste is actually in a really good place and isn't harmful to the economy because the way you earn your money through that is through a lot of trading post stuff, and the trading post is the biggest gold sink out there. Every transaction on the trading post takes gold out of people's pockets. Now, no, I do say it's not harmful for the economy, I do basically disagree with the fact that one of the easiest, best ways to get gold is as simple as running around pressing F, but I suppose it's a place, at least for those more casual of us, and for those of us who kind of like the community aspect, of running around in our chest train, or, you know, doing a little bit of the vine wrath itself, there are some qualities to the silver waste that mean, sure, if that's a great place to get money, for people who hate the instant stuff, for people who hate the five man stuff, who, for people who are scared of the toxic stuff, then they have their place, and it's a very rewarding place at that, that doesn't damage the economy. And so to go back to the original point of why would they nerf dungeons to encourage people to go raids and fractals, and not nerf some of this open world stuff like Silver Waste and maybe, you know, even some of the new maps they had as well. What I just said absolutely I think is a uh, argument, but also I think there's another important factor here. Maybe the point here is that Silver Waste is a completely different type of content. People who enjoy dungeons are probably going to enjoy elements of the fractals and the raids too. People who enjoy Silver Waste, maybe not so much. Now I appreciate there are some people out there who do like dungeons but don't like fractals. You know, five man versus five man instance content. But I think some people are just a little bit too intimidated by fractals. I would absolutely say difficulty wise, you know, the first 10 scale fractals are just as easy as dungeons. And hopefully when the day comes that fractals have as much variety as dungeons, we really shouldn't have any super unsatisfied people there. So let's change gears here for a second and indulge ourselves in one of the uh, most interesting to me arguments as to why this change has gone in and why it is damaging for the game. Here's a fairly valid argument. It depends how much you think Arena Net are in it as money grubbers and uh, you think it's a business model question. And this is the idea that dungeon rewards, because they don't really have a reliance on the trading post, you can run them on free to play accounts and get a ton of money on your free-to-play account. One of the primary things that I've experienced playing on a free-to-play account it, that would motivate someone to actually buy the game is you get a lot of stuff worth a lot of value in your inventory, but you can't sell it on the TP, and you're like, damn, if I just owned a real account, then I could get all this gold that's locked up. But dungeons, because it's just raw gold, and you don't need the trading post, free-to-play accounts are actually able to get by right now by doing a lot of dungeon running. So what they can do by nerfing that flat gold in the dungeons, free-to-play accounts don't get so much money. They're more incentivized already to upgrade and give ArenaNet their money. But further, they're shifting that reward to the raids, which you can also only get by owning Heart of Thorns and, guess what, giving ArenaNet your money. So you can say that this is actually a business model-inspired uh, change that it's really got nothing to do with how engaging fractals and raids are versus dungeons, or the fact that ArenaNet don't want to support dungeons anymore. It's simply because, by doing this, they can force people to buy Heart of Thorns. I think there could be an element of that in there somewhere. I absolutely do. Um, for me, as a player who's already bought Heart of Thorns, I kind of exist outside of that demographic of players who'd feel slighted by that. So I guess I don't worry too much. I think looking forward, it's interesting to wonder how frequently this could happen in the franchise. And I think maybe right now is really only one of those, the only situation this could come up. As long as they do stick with raids and as long as they do stick with fractals, then I think we'll be okay and we won't see that this issue comes up again, you know, with future expansions. In general, I'd like to give them the benefit of the doubt and think it's really not got very much to do with this, but it's a, it's a fairly well circulated idea I've seen at the moment. To discuss the idea of the rewards again a little more, I do really want to talk about Aetherpath. Because in a funny way, ArenaNet are doing what we've been asking them to do, and uh, they're kind of getting a bit of a backlash for it. Aetherpath has really cool mechanics. You know, this was one of their last attempts, really, to do something with dungeons. Really cool mechanics, uh, you know, more puzzle-solving things, more stuff you have to play into when you're defeating foes, more communication required. It's a really good path. It's one of the best paths you can do for dungeons. But because the rewards weren't really there, people weren't playing it, 
And then Arena Net were like, oh, people aren't playing it, so they discontinued supporting the content. And people have always criticized Arena Net for that. They've always said, look, what? don't do that. Aether Path was great for the game. The only reason people don't run it is because you didn't give it the better rewards. You, you let it have crappy rewards while people can continue running COF. This is stupid. You don't understand what you're doing. And now, basically... They could be listening to that. Now they are basically saying, all right, cool. We are going to do the fractals. We are going to do the raids. We are going to support them and keep supporting them. And we understand people might not play them if there are better rewards elsewhere. So we're addressing those better rewards elsewhere without touching the economy. That seems like a fair thing for them to do. And so those are pretty much the main arguments. I think you can tell essentially from the way I've been talking about this. I think this is an okay change. Yeah, sure. I'm disappointed that the gold rewards are going away. But I'm definitely slanting that this seems like a smarter idea for them. I especially don't like the idea of nobody running the raids, nobody running the fractals, because reward-wise, it's still better just to do dungeons. We still feel like the Zerk meta is still 100% in play, because it will forever be in play for those dungeons. And then the nightmare scenario comes, where ArenaNet says, oh, nobody's doing the raids, nobody's doing the fractals, the rewards are better elsewhere, I guess we'll just dump them and we'll try something new. That's the nightmare, and I think they're just generally trying to avoid that situation. The last thing I would like to say, just as we close the video, and I think this is perhaps one of the most important things I can say in this entire discussion, and that is the fact we don't even know how major this nerf is. Now, for the purpose of discussion, I'm happy to assume, you know, let's say, oh, all the gold is going. There's no longer a bonus chest, guys, and we're just putting the gold into the fractals instead. And you can basically uh, look at my arguments in this video phrased in that way. But the truth of the matter is, guys, we could be looking at something as little as, you know, like, 15 silver removed from the bonus chest from each of the dungeon paths. This doesn't even consider, right? They're removing only the liquid gold. The tokens, those old currencies, still will continue to have value. They are ingrained in legendary crafting. There are runes that you can own and sigils you can only get from those specific places. There are skin sets that people have to unlock. Uh, an entire collection dedicated to that. A collection that unlocks unique ascended gear that you can only get from these areas. So even if we assumed the worst case scenario where there was no gold, you would still see people running it. You would still see people running even the story modes just as they want to experience the story the first time they go through the game. It would be less common, but to say honestly that dungeons are truly dead because we hear the hint of a change to only the flat gold that comes from those paths is unbelievably short-sighted. Ignore everything else I've said in this video and appreciate the fact that we may be jumping the gun and that it's not as bad as we think it's going to be. This is maybe a problem with ArenaNet for not coming out with the damn solid numbers for us, but maybe that's a discussion on a whole different topic. It is true that dungeons not being supported fucking sucks, but we knew about that a long time ago. I guess welcome to the discussion if that's just dawned on you guys, but please, dungeons haven't been supported since 2013. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I'd love to hear your comments, and I'll see you next time.